Hi there, um, we're here at uh, Singapore FinTech Festival. Uh, I'm sitting here with uh, Chok Hala um, to talk uh, about the Singapore FinTech Association. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Um, so maybe you could just give us a little bit of an overview about the association, mm -hmm. a little bit of history and what it stands for. We are a, a non-profit cross-industry association set up uh, three years ago to support the growth of the FinTech sector and to facilitate the uh, collaboration among the different ecosystem partners. Three years back, uh, in 2016, uh, right before the first uh, edition of the Singapore FinTech Festival, we were officially launched. At that point in time, I think in Singapore, there were less than uh, 100 FinTech companies. Today, I think in Singapore, we have easily between 600 to 700 FinTech companies. Wow, what a great. At least half of them are our members. We have 350 corporate members. 20% uh, of our members are actually the banks, the insurance companies, the big four consultancies, the law firms. So we are pretty inclusive uh, and in Singapore, the general narrative is still about uh, fintechs collaborating with the banks. 80% uh, of our members have a B2B offering. And for the fintech association, we have grew together with the community. Like I shared today, we have 350 corporate members. But uh, more interestingly is that uh, we have a uh, international partnerships in 35 countries with uh, more than 60 partners. So as what we are seeing is that uh, FinTech is really something that is borderless. And uh, we managed to grow that over the last three years. And we are starting to reap all the benefits from all these uh, international partnerships. For example, for the, this FinTech festivals, we managed to convince many of them to set up their country pavilions in the festival. Okay, that's pretty impressive over a, a very short amount of time. Yeah. We've obviously grown the membership quite high uh, and achieved an awful lot. It seems like a bit of a, a strange question to ask why you're here at Singapore uh, FinTech Festival, but um, I guess uh, I've seen your lovely pavilion that you have yourself and you have a number of companies on there. So what's the, you trying to achieve with your presence here? Yeah, in fact, uh, this is the first time we have a Singapore pavilion. Uh, we think that uh, is it, it is timely that uh, we set up a pavilion because like, it would be strange for, uh, for the world's largest uh, fintech festival in Singapore that you don't have a Singapore pavilion. And uh, by creating the, the first and the largest uh, pavilion in the festival, that will also help to promote the Singapore fintech festival. So our pavilion is about 135 meters square. We house 22 of our members. In fact, uh, the demand was so great that we have to reject quite a number of the members. And uh, we're already planning next year to double the size of the pavilion because the uh, demand is really great. And fintech is, I mean, the fintechs are really doing well in Singapore. Many of them, many of our members already got uh, uh, late stage funding. Uh, a lot of them are looking to scale beyond Singapore and they are looking for more visibility doing more marketing, uh, most of them have a ready product and are ready to sell. Excellent, it's really good. So how, how, out of interest, how did you pick the 22? Mm. Because it must have been a very difficult thing to do. Yeah, so uh, we, we wanted to be as fair as possible. So for us is that uh, we wanted them to pay a deposit and it will be based on the time they pay the deposit. Okay, yeah. fantastic. Um, so, thinking about sort of the wider uh, fintech ecosystem, mm. um, what do you think is going to be the, uh, the, the future of fintech here in Singapore going into 2020? I think uh, in terms of uh, Singapore as a capital city for fintech, uh, as you can see that uh, fintech investment already uh, broke record uh, for the first nine months. Uh, we have more than 1 billion uh, investment in fintech companies and we are just behind China and India in this aspect. So we expect for the next one or two years, uh, more and more of our members will be getting their late stage funding. Uh, in fact, uh, we just launched a thought leadership report yesterday on the ASEAN fintech. Most of the fintech companies are pretty confident to raise at least $10 million for their next round. The second trend that uh, we are seeing is that uh, we think uh, 
the Singapore's uh, regulatory approach whereby we are doing a very fine balance uh, between the promoting innovation while putting sufficient safeguard uh, to keep the financial system safe and protect our consumer interests that is going to still driving Singapore as a fintech innovation hub uh, of course uh, I think uh, the recent uh, Sandbox Express is a very fine example of how we have calibrated the sandbox approach to something that is more fitting for the market conditions. Yeah, the, so that that is the two key development I'm thinking uh, moving forward for the next two years for at least for Singapore yeah. fintech ecosystem. But having said that, uh, we all know that uh, Singapore is a very small country. Uh, many of our members will need to scale beyond Singapore, and uh, that's why for the association we have been busy. Uh, signing MOUs, uh, deepening partnership with existing partners so that we can create that uh, international market for them so that uh, they, can, they are able to expand more rapidly. In fact, uh, this year we already conducted five overseas trade missions to countries from Cambodia to London to uh, Bangkok to Kenya and uh, next month we are bringing them to Taipei again. I think uh, this is important for them by helping them to open up the overseas market that will help them to scale more readily. Sounds really good. I know you're very, very busy and have yeah. to rush up to the meeting. So thank you very much for taking the time to speak with us today. Thank you for the opportunity to be interviewed. Thanks. No worries. Thank you.